These symbols should help you recite the Quran better, but some could be a bit confusing, especially these ones. So let's go through them and understand how to use them properly and what to do when they are stacked on top of each other. First of all, we'll cluster the related symbols to better understand the differences between them. We'll view them in three categories. Symbols that instruct you to keep on going, symbols that instruct you to pause, and a set of special symbols. The first set, all four of these symbols instruct you to keep on reciting. So the easier way to deal with them all is to treat them as the same thing and just keep on going. But there is actually some minor differences between them. Sila, which is short for Al-Waslu Awla, which is a general instruction to keep on reciting. But these symbols of Zay and Qaf specify the degree at which one should go. So, Zay is that you should be more likely to keep on going. So let's say 80% go, 20% don't go. While Qaf is that you are less likely to keep on going. So let's say 60% to 40%. But at the end of the day, if you see either of these, then don't stop and keep on reciting. However, La is a bit different. This La symbol can be used within the Ayah and also between Ayat. If it is used within the Ayah, then you should keep on reading and you should never stop there. But if it is used between the Ayat, then you may simply stop at the end of the Ayah since this is the Sunnah, but then you shouldn't end your recitation at that point. Now the second category, the symbols that instruct you to stop or pause. There are six of them. The most important one is the meme symbol, since as you might know, it is the mandatory stop symbol. There is no option for you except to stop, because it can potentially change the meaning of the ayah if you ignored it and you kept on reading. Like in this example, if you continued here, you would be adding this sentence and this verb to the previous sentence, and that would actually change the meaning of the ayah entirely. So pay attention here and do not ignore this symbol. And then we have these two, Qif and Sal, which both instruct you to stop. Qif means to stop, and Sal is a short for Qad Yusal, which means it is possible to continue here, but it is still better to stop at this point. So both tell you that you should pause here, but it is not a mandatory stop. In fact, you should be more ready to stop here than there. So the difference between them is only the degree at which you should stop. And these two also belong to this category, waqfa and sekta. These two are essentially the same, and they both refer to a momentary pause without taking a breath. For waqfa, the pause that you should be taking is longer than with sekta. Here is an example to highlight the difference between the two. مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ كَلَّا بَلْ رَانَ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ مَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ So they are both the same. You take a pause without taking a breath and the waqfa is a little bit longer than sekta. And finally, the three dots and it is the interconnected stop. And this is a pretty common symbol in the Urdu Mus'haf, and it is used to indicate that you should stop at either, but not at both. And then we have the symbol of Jim, which is kind of a neutral symbol that should go between the symbols that instruct you to go and the symbols that instruct you to stop. It refers to Waqfun Jaz. So it indicates a possibility to stop if you want to stop, but it also indicates the possibility to keep on going if you want to keep on reading. And now, finally, the set of special symbols. Let's start with Ta. This symbol indicates the ending of a sentence. So it is an indication for grammar, basically. But it also means that there is something else related that needs to be told afterwards. So you should not finish your recitation here. 
since there is some related information that will be told afterwards. So in this example here, the first sentence ends at the word as-salwa, but the information that comes afterwards is related to what was mentioned before. And there is the ending of another sentence. But what comes after is still related to what has been told in this ayah. So you may pause at these symbols, but you should not end your citation there, since the meaning is yet to be completed at the end of the ayah. And sometimes it also comes on top of the ayah, which means that you should keep on reciting to complete the meaning and reach the point when the message is conveyed. The next symbol is Sad, and this is an abbreviation for the word Rukhsa, which means a license or permission. And this symbol is usually found in longer ayat, and it indicates that you may only stop or pause if you have to take a breath, but if you don't have to, you should really keep on reading. So it is not the best spot to stop unless you really have to take a breath and take a break. So in this longer ayah here, you have this spot which indicates that you can take a breath here. But it would be better if you stopped here. The meaning would be better if it is all connected. Next is the symbol of Ain, which refers to the word Rukua. So it is more relevant if you are in prayer. And it indicates that this is a good spot to end your recitation and go to Rukua. That is because it indicates the ending of a certain teaching or a story of a prophet. So it would be a suitable place to end at that point. That's why shorter surahs end with this symbol, since you'll typically not split a short surah if you are in prayer and just go to Rukua after finishing it. If you are outside prayer, then it would also be a good spot to end your recitation if you were planning to discontinue Otherwise, you can just ignore it and keep on reciting if that was your plan. Finally, this symbol. And this symbol, when it comes between words in the ayah, it indicates a difference in qira'ah, which indicates that according to a different qira'ah, there is an ayah in that spot. That is why you will find it in Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the most famous example for this symbol. As many of you already know, in other qira'at, there is an ayah in that spot. More specifically, the riwayah of Warsh an nafa there is an ayah right here, and it is ayah number 6. So stopping here is not ideal according to the riwayah of Hafs, but if you did stop here, it is not prohibited. Here is another example for another ayah. So here it is better to keep on reciting since you are reciting according to Hafs and Asim. But know that this spot is an ayah according to a different riwaya or qira. Finally, when you see different symbols stacked on top of each other, what would that mean? Well, first it means that there are multiple ways to read this ayah. And this is a result of different opinions on the interpretation and what the best way is to read this ayah. This is the second ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. And as you can see, there are two sets of symbols. We have the three dots, so it means that we can stop at either here or there, but not both. However, it is better to keep on going in that spot and stop in that spot, since we have the Sila symbol here, and read it like that. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين. But the existence of Jim here indicates that it is still permissible to stop here and not there and read it like that. ذلك الكتاب لا ريب so it gives you an idea of the possibilities to read the ayah and what the ruling is for stopping and going for each spot, just by using symbols. And here's the example that we just looked at. Here, you shouldn't stop and you should actually keep on reading, since there is the la symbol. However, 
This spot is an area elsewhere, so stopping here is not bad either, but it is not the best choice. Finally, if you kind of feel confused about these symbols, and if you still don't know which is which, here is the easy way to deal with all of them. If you see any of these, then keep going unless you want to take a breath. But if you see any of these, then stop and take a breath. And if you see symbols stacked on top of each other, then follow the one on top. And always make sure to stop at the meme symbol and to always end your recitation at the end of an ayah unless it ends with a la symbol. Thanks for watching. If you want to start reading and understanding the Quran in Arabic, then you should start your journey right here. And don't forget to check out my latest book, which goes perfectly with this free course. I'll leave the links for all of them in the description, so check them out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.